Hi, John with eTrailer. Hey, if you're looking to flat tow your Equinox and your rig has air brakes on it, then check out the Demco Air Force One supplemental braking system that we installed on our 2022 Chevrolet Equinox. So let's take a closer look at what you need to be able to flat tow down the road like this. Of course, you're gonna need your base plate and that's gonna be the physical connection that's actually on your vehicle. Um, this is what we hook up to uh, and it's gonna allow you to start flat towing. Um, you also are going to need um, diode wiring, uh, basically your trailer light wiring. Uh, this is going to be coming from your RV and it's going to transmit the signals to the back of your car for all of the functions that you need. You need a tail lights, turn signals, and brakes. Um, next thing you're going to need, the actual tow bar itself. This links up your RV and the towed vehicle itself. This is going to be the physical connection. Uh, allows you to make turns, tow straight down the road. The fourth item you need to flat tow is going to be safety cables like this. Um, these are here just in the event of a catastrophic failure of one of the big parts, um, either on the RV or on your vehicle. This will keep them linked up. Uh, the very last part you need is going to be a supplemental braking system installed on your towed vehicle. Uh, this will keep you safe and legal uh, and it'll allow both of these vehicles to slow down in a controlled manner. Now one of the reasons I like this system is that unlike a portable system, this installs in your driver footwell um, and you don't have to worry about like a portable system. You'd have to install and then take it out every time you want to go somewhere. Uh, what this system actually does is when you hit the brakes on your RV, it's going to apply the brakes in your Equinox here. And it's proportional too. If you just lightly tap the brakes in your RV, it's going to lightly tap the brakes here. Slam the brakes on in the RV, slams the brakes on in your Equinox. It keeps everything uh, nice and controlled when you're coming to a stop. The Air Force One is aptly named because it is made for rigs with air brakes and it ties into your RVs. Um, airlines, the, uh, the, the supply line, the braking line, and it's going to supply the air through this coil cord into your vehicle. So the braking system, the Air Force One, runs off of air uh, and that's how it applies the brakes on your car. Now as part of the kit, you have an indicator light here and this lets you know uh, when your brakes are activated and when they're not, or if there's a problem with the braking system, you'll see it right here. When you apply the brakes on your RV, you'll see a red light. This is visible from the rear view cameras on your rig. So my final thoughts on the Demco Air Force One kit. Um, if you flat tow a lot, this is, in my opinion, the way to go. There's a reason that this is one of the most popular kits that we have here at eTrailer for supplemental braking system with a vehicle that has air brakes like this. If you want to see the components and how to install them on your Chevy Equinox, stick around. Okay, so with the Air Force One, we're going to be installing this tank that is included with your Air Force One kit by Demco. Um, this is going to tie into the airline uh, braking system on your motorhome if it has air brakes. Uh, most of the time on these diesel pushers like this, your tank's going to be located somewhere around the axle. Of course, the engine's back here, uh, so uh, the air compressor, all of this stuff is around here. So. Nine times out of ten, uh, what we're looking for is going to be around the axle, maybe just in front of it or just behind it. But we'll get under here. We're going to show you uh, what we're looking for and how to install this. Now, we're under our motorhome today, and uh, the connections that we're looking for are just forward of the rear axle here. And when you look up, you're going to see the air lines that are coming down, and they're going to be supplying your brake chambers here. What we're going to be looking for is the supply line and we're looking for the service line or the metered air connection. The service line is the metered air connection. Uh, that would be the actual brake pedal. That's going to be the brake input. Now on our rig here, this big green line, the bigger line, is going to be the supply line. It may not be on yours, but again, for a lot of the Freightliner chassis, um, this is going to be the supply line. It's just going to be a bigger line. Uh, versus, you'll see this one right here, this is our metered air connection on the service side. Um, this is going to be the input from the brake pedal. This is obviously the supply line that feeds the air tanks and everything. Now, uh, also a side note, before you cut into any of these lines, you need to make sure that your tanks are completely empty and you may have more than one air tank on your vehicle. So, make sure your tanks are completely empty. Um, if you need help identifying this, what you can do is, is, is either unhook the line at the quick connect 
and then start your rig. Um, if you start to have immediate airflow um, as your engine is idling, that is going to be your supply line. Um, if you don't, then have somebody press the brakes. So if you start to build air pressure, um, as you press the brakes, you should have air coming out of the metered side or the service side. So that's a couple of easy ways to figure out which line is which. So those two lines are going to tie in. Um, the new Demco units look like this. They're a little bit more streamlined um, and, and lower profile, but your supply line, the big green line coming from your truck would come in over on this side here. Uh, and all the fittings and, uh, and hoses are included in your kit. So your supply line would come in here and then your metered air line, your, your brake input basically coming from your rig is going to come in to the top into this one and then this line goes out to the back of your RV and that'll feed the Demco unit um, in your towed vehicle. Now your kit's going to come with plenty of nylon line and remember um, the line that we're running is going to be from the uh, from your your air cylinder here and it's going to go back to feed your towed unit and all we did was we ran the line up high avoiding hot parts, uh, moving parts and sharp parts. It's pretty much a direct line through there and we'll bring the airline back to this fitting and then this is the one that will tie into and run across your tow bar with the tow bar wiring and run into your towed vehicle to operate the Demco unit inside. As far as the main operating unit we'll go ahead and start in the front here and we're going to be looking at the breakaway switch and then the the air inlet. These are the two units um, that are mounted down in the front uh, by the bumper here and we're running a total of two wires and then a nylon air tube. That's all that gets run down here. The rest of it, what you're seeing is the flat toe wiring. So we just went ahead and ran the two wires and the nylon tube along the top of the base plate and up the engine compartment and then you could see our main operating unit. We mounted this on top of the fuse panel. Now when you're gonna if you want to do something like this as well as we did um, I ran the wires backwards over here. Now you also need to leave room so that you can still access the fuses below so make sure that you leave plenty of room with your wires. You're gonna have three hoses up here so that you can still access your fuse panel underneath. Now as far as hookups with the main operating unit, we are looking at two black wires. One of these gets run to ground, the other one is going to come in from our breakaway switch down at the front bumper here. As far as grounding points for the main operating unit, you have a few different locations that you can use. You have a grounding lug up near the front, um, and this is typically used for jump starting applications. You can use this. Uh, you can also use the battery negative if you choose, or there is a ground stud, um, and this is what we chose right here. So we grounded the unit here, and the rest of the power that's going to be powering this unit which was the orange wire connected in. You can see here, and it gets run over to your battery positive lug under here. This is all included with the kit. We do not have the fuse in yet. We're not going to put the fuse in until the very last step. So once this was hooked up, the only other wire that we ran was also was hooked up to our orange wire here. Was the brown wire that came with the kit. They call it violet in the instructions. I'm assuming they're just using any color they can get though. This is what uh, gets run through the firewall. Uh, you have one electric line and then you also have one nylon air line. And these two together, we went through the firewall back into the footwell of the driver's seat so that we could have the necessary connections for the actual braking system, the air cylinder and the indicator light. Now real quick, before we go inside the vehicle, um, I wanted to finish up with the plumbing connections on our main operating unit. You can see it's going to have air out, air in, 
and vacuum. So the air in is going to be the line that comes from our front bumper down by the breakaway switch that you saw earlier. The air out was the nylon line I was talking about. This gets run inside the firewall along with our uh, one uh, electric wire. Now the vacuum, this gets tied into your factory uh, brake booster system. So all of this stuff is included with the kit. You have a couple of check valves, one here, and then one that you can't, it's hard to see, but it's right here. We just cut this factory line and we tie it in. They have all the T's that you need. We have a three-way T up here. And this unit just operates and creates vacuum for the brake booster. Makes it easier for the uh, cylinder that's pushing your pedal down uh, on the inside. It just makes it possible uh, to, to operate. So these are all the main connections under the hood that you're looking at. Well, now we can go into the uh, driver's side footwell. We'll show you the rest. Now these are the two lines I'm talking about, the brown wire and the nylon tubing. We ran these through uh, the firewall up inside the footwell. So we're coming into uh, behind the brake pedal basically. So I had to remove the floor mat and you pull back the insulation. You could see the large uh, grommet uh, that, where the tube is coming out of. And it's, um, I went ahead and drilled a 3 8 inch hole. Uh, you have to be careful because the brake booster is on the other side. So when you're drilling through, definitely know what's behind that. Um, but I ran that through and this is the best point that I could find to run the, the, the plumbing and all the necessary hardware that we needed here. Now we're going to install the indicator light. This is an LED indicator light that um, it, shows, uh, it shows up. We, it gets mounted to the rear view mirror here up like this and basically what this does is you can look out the rear facing camera on your RV uh, and it lets you know like if you're hitting the brakes you can see that the brakes are working or if you're not hitting the brakes and this is lit up that you have a problem with the braking system here so it's more just like a warning identifier or a status indicator uh, letting you know if your brakes are working properly or not um, it has 3m sticky tape on the back and it's kind of a straightforward install we're going to stick this to the back of the mirror um, I've used a plastic trim tab tool to take this loose. I'm going to feed it through. We're going to run it up in the headliner here. I use the same tool just to take loose the uh, A-pillar molding here. And we're going to run it down the outside of this trim to underneath. I just like to do this first. Um, that way I know where my electrical connections are going to be, how much wire I have, because this does tie into um, our air cylinder the reed valve on here. Uh, this is going to basically, when this unit operates, this is going to turn the indicator light on for us. Um, and so we have this electrical connection, we're going to have this electrical connection, and hopefully we're going to have enough room and enough wire to get all of this with, a, with all the connections necessary we need right here in this left quarter kick panel. So I want to make sure we have enough wire here to run this cleanly and then we'll feed it up. So I'm just gently pulling down on the headliner. Um, it's a good idea to use gloves when you do this. That's why you're not getting oils and stuff and you're dirtying up the headliner. Just run this down. Um, another thing to keep in mind when you're doing this, on, on this Equinox we're okay because we don't have an airbag on this A pillar here or above us. The, it's actually on the B pillar here, the airbag. So anything with the SRS that you want to see, you want to be very, very careful taking off any kind of trim or putting anything like a wire behind it. So I'm going to peel this back and show you. Um, and these trim tools do come in handy for, for work like this, but you can see the line here that I left and this just gets tucked back behind this panel. And if you run that all the way down, you have a clear shot all the way down, straight down into this lower kick panel. And this is where we ended up. And this is where we're going to be making our connections. So this worked out well. We have a nice grounding location right here. So that was another nice feature. This is why we only had to run one wire in. This is our power lead, and we will be grounding right here at the lug. Now when you're actually mounting the light, it can be installed in any orientation. Um, you just want to make sure that it's going to be visible by your coach camera. 
Now in installing the air cylinder on your brake pedal, um, there's a couple of things that you need to keep in mind. One, um, this cable is going to attach to the firewall and this section here will attach to your brake pedal uh, beam that comes down. Uh, when, for this to operate efficiently, it needs to be as low as possible on the pedal here without interfering with your foot. This is something that stays um, attached to your vehicle even when you're not flat towing. So you want it up high, but it needs to be effective too. So um, just keep that in mind when you're mounting it. The other thing that we want to do is we want this cable to be routed on and mounted to the firewall is as straight as possible. We don't want it pulling up. We don't want it pulling down or side to side too much. So um, when you're mounting it, just keep those things in mind. I'm gonna, because of the tight quarters, I'm gonna mount this up and then we can show you what I've done here. So this is what we ended up doing um, on our Equinox. We have um, the cylinder sitting high enough that our foot isn't gonna contact it when we go and hit the brake. Um, it's, you can see with the cable here, how it's in line as straight as possible. And we attached it to the firewall uh, with the three self-tapping screws and the uh, the, uh, extra plate here um, and then I had to trim the carpet around that you don't want any carpet or anything that could hang this up and as far as the airlines we just routed them up and around this is a quick disconnect um, so if you need to take this off for any reason you just pinch it and pull out and that'll come off of there um, we also routed the the wire for this up and around and we're gonna end up over here and make our connections this will be our uh, pretty much the, the final step for inside the cabin here. So we can recap the uh, wires that we have here. This is the 12 volt uh, wire that's coming in from the firewall. We're going to have the indicator light has the red and black and then our reed switch on our brake cylinder has the blue and brown. So just to kind of keep things easy right now we're going to be connecting the blue wire and the red wire. And we're going to use the butt connectors that they have supplied with us in our kit. Okay, so that's good there. The brown wire here that's coming off of our reed switch is going to connect up to our brown wire coming in from the firewall. So we can trim this. And then that just leaves us with the remaining wire here. Um, and in our kit, we have a ring terminal. And this is going to be the ground. And we'll be using this ground right here. So that's it for the connections. You can use a uh, supplied wire loom that comes in our kit and clean this up. So we come to the point now where it's a good idea um, before you put the entire front fascia and everything back together, go ahead and test your system. So this is when we're going to use the supplied 10 amp fuse and we're going to put it in the fuse holder and we'll test and make sure everything's working properly. We wanted to test our system um, really just the correct way since everything on the car is still taken apart. We went ahead and backed up our motor home and hook the system up, charged it. You usually need to uh, press the brake pedal for about three seconds or so and it will charge the system. And if you're by yourself, you can just pull your breakaway switch and with the system self-charged, it will depress the brake pedal. You'll see your LED light um, and then you'll know if everything's working properly. Then you can just reassemble your car. And that was a look at the Demco Air Force One supplemental braking system that we installed on our 2022 Chevrolet Equinox.